Hi, it's Michael from Men's Finest. In this video, I'm going to show you three major folds of a pocket square. And this video is part of our Making Men Look Smarter video series. Click on the playlists to see all the videos. And don't forget to subscribe. Let's get to it. This video is a part of a video series making men look smarter by men's finest and in this one we're going to be talking pocket squares how to pull them off to look like a pro if we are talking types of pocket squares we are talking cotton like this one we are talking wool like this one and we are also talking silk like this one how to pull off a pocket square to look like a pro is a very interesting question therefore we decided to do this very quick making men look smarter video series. Just like a great tie, a classic woven dress, a pocket square is a timeless way to add some flair to your look. But do you really need to do this? Do you really need to understand pocket squares? Here's the thing, uh, while wearing them might seem as simple as just shoving them into your blazer pocket, there are some general guidelines about how to wear them, what to wear them with, how to pair them. Because not everything goes with everything, you need to make sure you understand them before you move to step number two. First of all is how much of a pocket square we should actually show. Well, usually if we show two fingers, that's probably okay rule. One finger is also okay, so we can actually leave them there. Also, you have to make sure that the pocket square doesn't actually bulge your, your breast pocket. So it doesn't stand out too much. So you actually look like you're trying too hard. That's why we need to choose a correct type of pocket square, correct material. Because if we choose a wall pocket square, it may actually try to bulge um, our pocket and that doesn't look good. So you have to be careful. It all depends on the size and the depth of your breast pocket of your jacket so if you've got a, a very deep uh, pocket make sure you use a pocket square that can fill in that gap it doesn't go in it just fills that in so that could be a bigger silk pocket square or a bulkier bigger wool pocket square in some of my jackets that have got two deep pockets here for the pocket square what i do is actually saw maybe maybe three quarters of it um, I'll put a few stitches in there so you can't see them uh, but what that does it actually stops pocket square going into uh, the breast pocket too deep so if I have got a tiny pocket square and I've done for this jacket I've done that trick it actually never is going to go in so you may as well want to put a little um, you know a little needle a few threads in there and all of a sudden you are good to go. So where the pocket squares came from, you may ask? Well, it started a long time ago, in probably 1400s um, in Europe. They were made of uh, different materials with some exotic finish and exotic silks, uh, usually back then. But it wasn't until the 19th centuries, really, when the pocket squares uh, kicked off big time. You start seeing people wearing them, especially wide ones, here in the breast pocket. And that sort of took off and never stops. So what's the secret of choosing a right pocket square? Well, when it comes to choosing square, um, men are very simple. We try to keep things matching so we don't have to remember of what goes with what. So for instance, for that pocket square, very often people would wear exactly the same tie. And for a pink pocket square, you know, people would also use pink tie. But the unbroken, never to be broken rule is never to match a pocket square with your tie. There are merry rules, that's one of them, and you cannot break it. So please never buy a set of pocket squares and bow ties that you can buy on eBay. Never do that. Please don't do that. Please don't. Don't do that. Never. Don't. Okay, so what we can match this pocket square with? Well, this one was gonna go nicely with a, uh, this jacket because it's sort of a blue jacket blue pocket square is going to pop because it has got that white so that is very nice also we have got this wool pocket square it's kind of a gray 
with red um, uh, pocket square. It's kind of a bigger one, so we have to be careful so it doesn't bulge uh, our pocket, so we can go maybe a bit of a, a flamboyant fold. The occasion matters when you wear in the pocket squares and how you're going to wear it. Uh, formal events always go with a wide pocket square. It, it gives you that crisp, clean look. For anything other, any any other events that you know, you don't have to wear a black tie, or there isn't any formal event or an interview. Link above. Uh, go with something with the colors. People like colors. It pops. It starts the conversation. Do that. Fold in a pocket square is a completely different subject. One of my favorite ones, actually, because. I get that question a lot. How do you fold a, a silk pocket square, for instance? There are a few essential folds. First, let's remove the one from our pocket and let's use the silk one. The silk that I've got is actually a, a kind of a bigger one, is a uh, probably 35 centimeters by 35, so very thin, nice, uh, the one that we can play with. But first of all, let's have a look at a TV fold. Can you do a TV fold with a silk pocket square? Yeah, yeah you can. You grab a pocket square and you fold it so you've got a small pocket like this. Then what you do, you have to check what's the width of your pocket. Okay, so I'm thinking probably if I do it another half of it, that's more or less the width of my pocket, right? Yeah, okay. So from there on, what I can do is right now adjust how long, how deep my pocket is uh, and play with the width of that pocket square. So what I'm going to do first is put that in and see how it, how it looks. Maybe I can slide it a bit deeper just to see if I can uh, see two fingers. Yeah, two fingers are shown. Boom. Even if you look at the internal parts of a pocket square, you can see that kind of it folds together. You can see the edges are there as well. I think that's a very clean look. Then we've got one corner fold, uh, which involves positioning this square like a baseball diamond. How do we do that? I'll show you that now. So we've got the pocket square, you grab two opposite corners, so it's a triangle. Then you grab the other uh, corners in, so you've got something that resembles this. And then what you could do is simply take the square, maybe fold it like that so the corners are on the outside. And you place it like that. That's a very simple and neat to fold a very nice pocket square. Do you want me to do that again? You're showing that to your mate. You're showing him fantastic pocket square that you've got. And then you say, oh, I need to fold it back. How do I do it? I've got it there. Corners together. Corners together. I've got four corners here. And all the bits flying about there. I want to do corners to corners. Stick it in there. Spread a bit of the corners. What's up? Another fold that I use very often, and this is probably, apart from a TV fold, my favorite fold, is the puff fold. What do you do? Well, you've got a square. You place it on your hand and you keep it like that. So very simple. You just do it like this. So it, there is a bit of a puff here created. And all you have to do right now is place it in your pocket and do whatever else with the puff you want so it sort of puffs out. It can puff out more, it can puff in, if that's even a word, or you can just leave it like that. And what, someone's asking you, show me your pocket square, you've shown that again, you think, oh, what a fantastic pocket square, you pull it off, you put it like this, puff, goes inside, no excuse. Start doing your pocket squares correctly.